Hello, greetings! Uh, having set up our linear programming problem for our urban renewal uh, model example, uh, in this screencast we'll go ahead and solve it using LibreOffice Calc. Uh, once again, uh, while I'm using LibreOffice Calc, the solution in Excel should essentially be uh, the same. Okay, so um, in our previous screencast we set up the model, and so here I'm just going to focus on numerically solving in LibreOffice Calc. So um, we'll go through the problem in a second, but just to get a, essentially a head start, so I'm just not typing in um, Excel um, or LibreOffice Calc, essentially I set up a table which lists our housing type, so it includes our single, double, triple, and quadruple family houses, um, which we're interested in constructing. I also have a row for the um, houses we need to demolish, only because our variables in this problem are the number of single, double, triple, quadruple, um, and then also the number of houses we're going to demolish. And so I want to have those all listed here so that in column E I can list it out the uh, units of each. Okay. Um, but I guess if I jump to <laughs> E, um, so here I've listed all my uh, variables. Uh, so the units of the four types of houses I'm interested in constructing and then the one type that I'm interested in demolishing. Um, so these are all the variables I'm solving for, so I need to start with an initial guess for the number of each. So I just put one um, in, in each cell there. Uh, and then for single, double, triple, quadruple, I list the tax per um, unit uh, collected, uh, the cost of constructing those four types of houses, and then also the cost of demolishing um, our um, demolishing one of these uh, old houses, uh, then the acreage used in the four houses we're interested in constructing, um, the acreage that we gain by demolishing a house, uh, and then again uh, this is what we're, we're solving for. Okay, so um, we'll scroll through this problem um, and look at our solution um, for the problem as we had set it up and keep flipping back to Excel, get it set up and uh, solve. Uh, so the first thing is we were told that we want to uh, maximize the tax dollars collected. So our um, objective function is the revenue generated from tax. And so that's just the tax generated um, per house times the number of units of each house type. So if I go over to Excel, okay, so let's say, uh, let's create a cell, let's call it tax revenue. Okay, and so this is our objective function. Okay, it'll be in dollars. And that's going to be the sum of the tax generated per unit type times the number of units of that type. Okay, and again, I start with an equal sign since we're dealing with an equation. Bam. Okay, so I have my tax revenue. Okay, and then as I go back up, we'll have to start looking at our constraints. Okay, and I'll get my constraints set up in Excel like I've been doing, where I'll have essentially the left hand side um, and then the right hand side listed in two separate cells, and then I'll get the uh, inequality in there um, when we go into solver. Okay, so let's just label them out um, as I have here. So let's say constraints. Okay, and I'll have constraint one. So constraint one was X5, the number of demolished uh, houses is less than or equal to 300. So this left-hand side will be equal to the number of demolished houses. Okay, and that's gonna be less than or equal to 300. Okay, so constraint two. Okay, so constraint two. So 0.25 was the acreage per demolished house. So 0.25 times x5 is the total um, acreage freed up by demolishing this number of units of houses. Okay, so that you know free or available land um, has to be greater than or equal to. We list out the um, space required to build our houses. So this is acreage per each unit type times number uh, of those units, and then we add on here that 15% of the accessible land is going to be used for streets, green spaces, um, and um, utilities. Okay, so left-hand side, oh, so left-hand side is the acreage 
um, per demolished house times the number of demolished houses. Then the right hand side is the acreage per house type that we're going to construct times the number of units of that type. And then I do this for all four types of houses we want to build. Okay, and then I'm going to add on to it 0 0.15. Okay, um, 0 0.15. So 15% of the total available space. The total available space is acreage times number of demolished houses. Okay. Constraint three. Okay. And you know I, I could have you know listed this separately in a variable and broken the calculation up, but it's it's easy enough here. Okay, constraint three was this is the number of um, three family and four uh, family units is greater than or equal to, um, so at least 25% of the total. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, this is the total number of units constructed. So the number of three and four bedroom units is uh, at least 25% of the total. So left-hand side is x3 plus x4. Okay, and the right-hand side is 0 0.25 times um, the total, and I'm just going to sum up those four. So I'll use the sum function rather than add. Okay, okay. constraint four. Um, so single-family houses is at least 20% of the total. So this is equal to um, single, all right? And I'm using an equal sign because I want this cell to get updated as solver changes the values of our variables. Okay, and so the right hand side is, um, is it 0.1 or 0.2? I've already lost track. 0.2. So 0 0.2 times, and again, I'm just going to use sum to sum up um, the number of, of houses constructed. Constraint five is uh, two bedroom houses are at least 10% of the total, or not two bedroom, two family. So the left hand side is x2, and the right hand side is uh, 0 0.1 times, and again I'm going to use sum to sum up the total number of houses. Okay, total number of houses built. Okay, so that's constraint five. And then constraint six is this uh, budgetary constraint. So this is the cost of each um, type of house we're going to construct. Uh, so the cost to construct each type of unit times the number of units constructed. And then we also add on the cost of destruction uh, times the number of houses we're destructing. And that's going to be our left-hand side. So that's our, our total uh, investment, if you will, the cost to build and cost to clear the land. Uh, and then that has to be less than 15 or less than or equal to 15 million dollars, which is the maximum loan we can take uh, from the bank. Okay. So constraint six. Okay, left hand side is going to be uh, cost times or cost per unit of each type times the number of units. And I sum over all the houses we want to build. So making sure that it looks right. And then I add to it the cost to demolish times the number of houses we need to demolish. Okay. And then the right hand side is the maximum investment we could take is $15 million. So I'm going to just enter that as 15 uh, e to the 6. So we'll use scientific notation. Okay. The only other constraint listed was our non negativity constraint that we can't have negative units. And that we can get just via uh, checkbox and, and solver. Okay. Um, you know, one thing I'll add is so here's constraint six. We have lots of zeros, um, and so when I summarize my equation, um, what I did is I divided through by a thousand just to make it easier to write. Um, but that won't have any impact whatsoever uh, on the result. So if I go back over then to to solver, okay. 
So I want to maximize my tax revenue. So I'm going to do tools. Uh, I'll go to solver. Okay, I want to maximize uh, cell B9. I'm going to change uh, my variables are number of each type of unit we want to construct and the number of units we're going to demolish. Okay, and then I'll go through my constraints. Okay, so constraint one. Okay, um, I have um, left hand side is less than or equal to uh, right hand side. Okay. And even though this is just a constant, so it's just a number that's typed in that cell, it's not an equal sign. Um, sometimes it's still nice just to set it up to, to reference to make it more easier to do, um, make changes for, you know, asking yourself what if types of scenarios, doing sensitivity studies. Constraint two is left-hand side's greater than the right-hand side, or greater than or equal to. So left-hand side is greater than or equal to the right hand side okay so constraint three we have the left hand side we have the right hand side and the relation is uh, greater than or equal to okay go to constraint four here's my left hand side there's my right hand side and it's a greater than or equal to down to add more. Okay. Constraint 5. There's my left hand side. There's my right hand side. Again, greater than or equal to. Okay. Constraint 6. The left hand side. Right hand side. And I believe it's less than or equal to. Good. And then non-negativity, I'm just going to make sure I've got my box checked to assume uh, variables as is non-negative. Okay. Again, you could just as well enter in all of those you know, non-negativity constraints, but uh, checking the box is <laughs> um, easy enough. Okay, so if I solve, it says it was successful. Okay, and so let's see. So we were uh, given a reference answer, but it looks like I get tax revenue of 343965 uh, What was the value I gave you um, from the source that I took? 343965 Alright, so it looks like, so we've got the uh, the right numerical value. That's good. Okay, so that would suggest that um, our answer is hopefully correct. Uh, it looks like all our constraints are obeyed. Okay, which is good, which means I didn't goof anything up. Um, and, you know, as a note here, you know, we, we're not looking at integer programming quite yet, so we don't have um, integer values, okay, but what I could always do is I could always round um, to the nearest whole number, all right, and so um, that would be what we would predict or calculate to be the optimal mix of um, single, double, uh, triple, and quadruple houses to build, uh, and it actually looks like we suggest not to build any quadruple quadruple family houses. Um, then also interestingly enough we, we demolished 244 uh, houses. Remember we, we could demolish up to 300 and so we actually have you know 56 more uh, that we could knock down in the future if we wanted to. Okay so that's it. Um, looks like we got it right. We've got the, the correct answer here. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, I'll make sure I upload the um, my spreadsheet for you as well and so hopefully that can serve as a good reference for you. Okay, Hope that helps. If you have any questions for me, please let me know.